Street, your local singer, songwriter, artivist. How are you guys doing? He just had to, like, make it about him. You told me. Anyway. To, you literally told me that after I introduce myself, I should say something different every time. I'm literally taking directives and following them, and nothing ever pleases Dear Nodge. He's a little upset today. Yes. Wow. I'm flustered. I'm angry. Angry, angry. So get into this hair. <laughs> get into the hair. I know everybody gasped in front of their <laughs> TVs and computers and phones. Like, I get it. We're going to get into that. But this morning, we got Chef Dana Dane. Wait. Let's talk about the hair. Yes, we're going we gonna to get into Let's that. Let's do it right now. Okay. Shout out to Quinn. Quinn has become slowly Quinn. one of my favorite people I on the love Facebooks. You. Yeah, I, I think he's great. Like even his posts, and obviously yes. he's very gifted at doing hair. Yes. So walk us through what they did or what he did mm -hmm. to get you right. So it was a little bit of wine. <laughs> uh, There's a little bit of celebrity gossip. Okay. There we'll get lots to that. Of laughs. Okay. Um, we didn't get it. done my hair until 3 a.m. Wow. And you started when? At like 10:30. Okay. But I was like, baby, come cut this. Come mm -hmm. cut his style. Mm -hmm. Come transform me. So I actually have an interest in the whole process. Like, so, so you walk in, what's the first thing he does? Wash it? No. Okay, see? So he brushed it. He brushed it. I don't know what he did. I'm going to be honest because I'm, I'm not watching. Okay. But I know he, like, brushed it, and then I think he um, put the product in. Okay. And then it sits for a little bit. Okay. And he washes it out. Is this look like the Malcolm X movie when he was... <laughs> oh, and he cut it. He put it in a ponytail and cut it. And he oh, handed wow. it to me. How does that feel to you when you hear the snip and you see that? Does it bother you? You're just yeah. like, no, okay. I've, right. I've been bald, so right. at this point, this is like, right. they're done now. Did he ever wash your hair? Yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> did you wash your hair? I did, this time. Sometimes mm. I do, sometimes I don't. Mm. You know, depending. Well... I'm excited about my new look. I know y'all are excited. <laughs> and then he cuts it and colored it. And yes. Okay. All yes. right. It looks good. It Thank does. you. Yeah. Thank you. Shout out to Quinn. Shout out, Quinny Boo. Mm -hmm. um, Chef Dana is here. What you yes. got cooking up in the kitchen? Hey, hey. So today we are cooking uh, some key lime tarts. I know spring's coming. Mm. And I get inspired. I love the spring flavors. I love the berries. I love the citrus. Mm -hmm. So we're doing some key lime tarts. We're going to do some <laughs> lemon curd tarts. And we'll do uh, kind of like a mixed berry tart, almost like a little fruit tart. We're excited to taste the tarts later on with Chef Dana. But now we're going to go into what's going on in Delaware. You know what's going on in Delaware? No, tell me. I know what's going on in Delaware. 95 is a mess. Yep, and it's going to be that way for a while. 95 is a mess. Um, I don't know what you planning people. I think that's like the, I don't know what the name is of the people who actually structure how these. Right. I mean, it's like Del Dot, right? I mean. Y'all need some professionalism. No, that's mean. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not what I meant. It's going to be that way for a couple of years. <laughs> but it's going to not be fun and we have to just accept it. A couple of years. We already, people have been sh in traffic in Delaware because we only got like one main road. Like, it's it, a mess. Uh, yeah. I mean, it it's is. But, you know. There learn are... your back roads, people. Learn the street. Learn learn the local streets to get around. Be like Jay. No, I mean. Jay I... takes. Jay takes. <laughs> I take. I He's like, like a wolf in the night. Okay, this man knows every single back road there I is. I enjoy, but not only because it's it's it, it eases up travel time when things are as they are now. Right. But I, you know, between my motorcycle and my truck, I am one of those people who likes to just cruise and go on joy rides. And there are some really great roads around here to just kind of have fun on. On and and when you know them, it also allows you to navigate the whole area really well. And you know. It's annoying, but there are other, you know, hey, listen, you know, we're slowly coming out of COVID. There's lots of good things to talk oh, about. Outside, about to open back up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's it, the weather is starting to break, you know. We're getting yes. a nice week of weather. I think Wednesday is supposed to be in the 60s, like, you know. Speaking of that, yeah. um, listen, get in here. Get in here. Don't act up. Okay, don't be getting your flip flops out. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. <laughs> At what point is it okay to wear your flip flops? When it's consistent. Was it 70 degrees? Yeah. Okay. But okay. don't. I don't like flip flops really. I'm giving the. 
Right. <laughs> no, I know. I know. Um, the Laugh House on Union Street is now open. So when are we doing a set of comedy? You, we've talked about this. You have stated, and maybe not on air, but you have always said that you, and you're funny when you want to be. You make the people laugh. Would you, what would it take to get you to do two minutes of, 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 of pure stand-up? If I was doing a J Street roast. Okay. That could be a good segment, people. That could be really funny. <laughs> we could do a two-minute Nas Roasts J at the Laugh House. Ooh, listen. That would be stop. really funny. Y'all better stop. That would be funny. It would be hilarious. That is something that we should explore. Me and one of my best friends. Literally, Comment if you want to hear that. Yeah. We literally roast each other. Pierre, you if you're watching, you know what I'm talking about. Literally, every time we get on the phone, yeah. we roast each other for like the first 15 minutes. Yeah. And then we get into life. I mean, can we <laughs> talk about how, I mean, um, comedy is, in my brain, right now, one of the few places where artists are still really, really free. You know what I mean? Like Chappelle... Yeah is still he's a different kind of beast but then you have like bill burr and you have a lot of people who are still saying risky things yeah and the things that are you know certainly controversial but that are also things that people are afraid to say right. and i i love having that sort of final frontier of freedom i think it's cool yeah. like and i've been kind of paying more attention to comedy okay. over the past couple of years um, and I love the fact that we have the Laugh House now where yeah. who knows what could be grown from that here in And Delaware. not just for the comedy, but they have local artists performing. So this is a new avenue for all of you local artists who are looking for a venue. Mm -hmm. um, I know Aziza has mm -hmm. performed there, mm -hmm. and she tore the house down. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know who's coming up in the next couple weeks. Jonathan but... Whitney has his jazz brunch there. Oh, snap. Bam. Listen. Bam. Go okay. check out my man. This is about to be the spot. This is yeah. about to be where it's at. Yeah. So make sure you're supporting. It's around the corner from, it's right across the street, sort of from like, well, do they have food San, there? Isn't it near San, it's near Santa, Santa Fe? It's near Santa Fe, but yeah. I think that they have food there, so you don't have to worry about getting the food, but oh, Santa okay. Fe is close. Right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's in a very convenient place. The yes. parking's good. Yes. So I hope that that place is successful and continues to, to grow because I love comedy. Like, yes. You know? And yes. I, even when we do shows, like, I would love to have some of my, it would, it would just be really cool to be able to always make, uh, comedy sort of a staple here in the city. You yeah. know? I know we have comedians here that are based here. Um, it just would be nice to see them more often. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I, I don't think I've ever been to a comedy show in Delaware. No, I don't think I've ever been to a comedy show, actually. Have I been to a comedy one. show? Oh, my God. I have. I Where? Have. Who'd you see? It's okay. okay. It's been a while. It's yeah, been yeah, a no, while. I'm just okay. <laughs> My COVID brain is like, <laughs> I don't remember. No. But I know I've been to one. I think it was in Philly. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I'm excited. Make sure you guys are going to their website, their Facebook, their Instagram, because uh, I know they actively post. So check that out. Support. Mm -hmm. If you haven't been on Kirkwood Highway recently near, what is it, Price's Corner, the Target, the Target, Le Target <laughs> is almost up. Okay? You know it's good. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you something. That's only 10 minutes from my job. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so tired of driving all the way up Brandywine or to, to Brandywine or going all the way to the, the Christiana Mall and fighting everybody for parking. It'd be nice to just ha go to this one. Yeah. I, so for me, and as you talk about that, like, okay, so my wife, obviously, you know, she, she loves Target and that kind of thing, too. Across, Target. Target. Across the street, like, across the street and behind, like, down one block is the Indian motorcycle dealership. So in my brain, you know, oh, y'all want to go to Target? Go ahead. I'll drop you off to Target. You guys do all the shopping you want to do, and I will just completely immerse myself in oh motorcycles my for the hour or so that you want a small, you know, do all kinds of shopping because I can't stand shopping. I really. I can tell. It no, no, exactly. No, you are spot on correct. You can. Yep. I I cannot, like, it, when you if if oh, you. Oh no, need to explain. That's all. Put me in a mall I can, and I start spinning. I can see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah. <laughs> and clear and and near um. How far is this from? So, uh, behind the the Target is like the Walmart. Yeah. In that area, mm -hmm. the Amazon, mm -hmm. the Amazon, uh, Amazonian warehouse. warehouse forest is going to be there. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be two locations it's in Delaware. Huge. 
Um, so we might be down to one day delivery, baby. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Ooh. Support your small businesses as much as possible. Try to help out the little guy because Bezos is yes. doing perfectly fine. Listen. It's very convenient. Is he but single? I don't know or care. He probably never mind. How he old is he? I don't know. Where he live at? He could do whatever he wants. He could have 15 wives if he wants. Single. And <laughs> oh my gosh. You, well, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. There. Now it's time. What is it time for? For our new segment. Uh oh. Now just sports uh -oh. talks. Dunna, dunna. I need some music. So. The Blue Coats, the Delaware Blue Coats, which mm -hmm. is our basketball team, mm -hmm. they are in the playoffs. Congratulations. We, they are the first. De this is the first time <laughs> a Delaware team has ever made the G League playoffs. Shout out to the G League. <laughs> G. Listen, the group is about to be flew out league. to the bubble. It's the okay? Great League. The huh. what? The Great League. That's what the G stands oh, for, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Great. Uh-huh. News. Listen. Playing um, off. Groupies, there may be some cheap flights at the Newcastle Airport. Mm hmm So go ahead and get but your But how are you going to break that bubble? How are you going to break that bubble? Oh, the groupies find a way. Oh, the groupies they find all way. a way. They find <laughs> They'll a way. pop that bubble all and right. get on up in there. Um, <laughs> don't, don't ask me to score because I don't know. Mm -hmm. But we obviously did good if we in the playoffs, honey. Mm -hmm. So, last sat wait last Saturday the Saturday before last, my neighborhood had a meeting. So where I live, and I'm not giving details, but where I live, there's a giant lot that's empty, and yeah. there are like four different um, streets. So yeah. one, two, yeah, it's like a square. The developer, the land developer, had to have a meeting with the community in order to get approval to make garages or townhomes in that lot because for years it has been empty. Mm -hmm. This is where you need to know about your local government and your rights as, um, what do you call it? Uh, just a person, just, just a person just, who lives there yeah. or whatever. A resident. a resident. There we go. Yeah. If we say no as a collective, he can't do anything. He can't build anything. But we also have to show up to the meeting um, that he has to take to city council to get the approval and let them know we don't agree with it. Um, the problem is, and I'm not saying this is about him, but a lot of, I'm finding out that a lot of developers use shysty tactics to keep um, residents from going to the meetings or from not even knowing that there was a meeting to be held about mm -hmm. what's going on. So I found out that I need to reach out to my council person who is Shanae Darby. Mm -hmm. I found mm -hmm. out that we have to possibly petition um, and talk to each other. So this is a great, I think for me, it was a great learning experience because I didn't know I even had a say. So for all the people who feel like there's nothing that they, that they feel lost in Wilmington trying to figure out what you can do to make a difference, start where you live. Your civic associations. Your civic associations because you have a say. If there's something going on in your neighborhood and someone's trying to build something or renovate something or bring some, build a liquor store, they gotta let y'all know. And if you oppose it, that's your voice being heard. So dovetailing off of that, like, great point. And, you know, we had Jahidi last week. Yeah. And one of the main things that he was talking about is what you're saying, mm -hmm. getting really involved at that local level because it matters. Yes. <laughs> like, and literally, I just had to go in my backyard. Uh, like, I, I'm not going to go on a rant, but when I hear people say that, not in like it, that that when i hear people say that voting and not being politically involved it doesn't matter it's 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 no different to me than saying the earth is flat like it's just not true like you got to get involved and that's yeah. not to say everybody has to be on the front lines you know running for office and right. supporting a candidate and canvassing and all those things but like you have a say and you can your voice can be heard right. you know and you should have your voice heard because you care about what happens in your neighborhood. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm and saying? And I care because yeah. there are t children who are always playing in the, the back lot um, that I live near. And 
I care about who lives around me. Yeah. And I'll tell you, when when you see the garages a few blocks down, I see what goes on there. Yeah. I'm not for it. But it's really important. Like, you know, it's one of those things. You're so right. that It's really important that kids have a place to play. Yes. I'm you like, know? this is, and they told me that lot has been like that for 50 years. Oh, wow. Why now? Yeah. You know? And I actually kind of made a plea to the guy, like, listen, are you hurting for cash? Because if not, this could be a community park. This could just, you could just flatten yeah. out the, the, the ground yeah. and let it be something for the neighborhood. Yeah. I think, you know, we got to put the heart and compassion and care back into our communities. And it starts with taking that step and voicing your opinion. So your voice does matter. It may not matter in the big, big, big to you, but at home, home base, it does. So make sure you're playing an active role in your community. Uh, who, what's your name? Who are you? Is Honey. it the hair? Like, I don't understand who I'm actually listening to. Listen. Because I feel like if, I, I feel like, I don't know who you, like, I, I, this is fantastic. You know, when this, I'm growing. When we started this <laughs> show, growing. what, four or five months ago, I don't like politics. I don't thing. like politics, but that but, doesn't mean. You know, but I get it. It's like, I don't like Brussels sprouts, but I'm going to eat them because I know they're good for me. You know what I mean? It's the Thank same you, thing. I, I, listen. He's proud of me. I'm Good stuff. We're going to go to the good news with Desi. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then we're going to get some, uh, some tarts. Nice. You know, I like to eat. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. It's your girl, Desi, and now it's time for the good news. Remember to follow us on DETVCH.com because you might just hear your quote. Now, this quote today is coming from Bell Lyric 11 on Instagram, but the original quote comes from Mark Twain, and it says, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. Once again, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. So have you ever told a lie, even the little white ones? Here's the thing, once you tell one, you have to tell another and another, and after a while it just gets too hard to keep up. So do me a favor, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. And that's your good news with your girl Desi. Don't forget, follow us on DETVCH.com. Desi, thank you for the good news, and now once again, it's time to eat. <laughs> Chef, talk to us. What are we doing here? That's so yeah. today we're gonna eat something nice and tangy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna do uh, some key lime tarts. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, with spring coming, I figured it's perfect. Yes. Um, it's really simple to make. Sweetened condensed milk. Mm -hmm. I just one can of it right in the bowl. Sweetened condensed milk. Sweetened and condensed you can buy that as its own yes. thing. You don't have to make it. Okay. No, no you don't have to make this. Okay. One. You buy it as its own. Okay. And then I just crack uh, a couple eggs in here. Okay. Some people use yolks. I use the whole egg. It works just fine. What's the difference if you? Well, if you use just yolks, it's going to be um, a little denser, I guess okay. you could say, okay. because it doesn't have the egg whites in there to lighten it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. Then I'm going to zest a little bit of lime zest. I've seen here. my wife do this before. She, she, do she this does before? lemon zest. Shout out to wifey. Yeah. All she right. she, she knows how to bake. You were telling me that, that she yeah. could bake. Yes, yes, she so can. The, she throw down. the cooking is the challenge, but yes, not the baking. Yes, she, she used to have a business, um, and it, it stopped and once we had... Then you ruined her. And then I ruined her with two babies, <laughs> and now <laughs> there's no more baking. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. But you know, baking's like the harder one. She, she's got the harder one She's down. very meticulous and organized. You that's her personality. Like okay. she can, If you give her a recipe, that's like, like it, she will nail it, so... Yeah. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we, I that put a little so lime good. zest in yeah, there. It does. I love lime zest. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're just going to cut some open. Now, you know my question that I'm going to always ask you is what kind of an adult beverage would pair well with this? Mojito. Yes. Mojito. Ooh, that's what we need. Yes. yes. That's what we need. I just made a strawberry mango mojito the other day. Ooh, that sounds that's amazing. Yeah. I need a mojito now. Right now. Right now. You what like mojitos still? Who doesn't? Sam. Anyone who doesn't like mojitos. Give me like a, mo mo a mojito stat. <laughs> stat. <laughs> okay. So I'm just squeezing some lime juice in here. Okay. 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 And then I'm going to pass it over to you. I'm going to let you mix it. Uh, are y'all about to see me whip it up real quick? <laughs> we got to get the song. We got to get the, the learn it's, the whip it. It's really bad. We have to remind ourselves to learn the whip it song. The, the Pharrell whip it. it whatever. It's not, it is not Pharrell. It's not? No. Who did it? I thought he had to be. No, it was, no, it's Migos. 
he didn't have anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't, I don't know if he something like whip it with the something and stir, yeah. mm-hmm. stir fry. Yeah. Stir fry. Something. Stir fry. Yeah, but how's it go? I can't really oh, remember. I don't, I don't know. know. All right, we're off. It's on my workout playlist. I know that. It's a good song. Okay. You know, when I be working. So I'm going to give this to you. Let Naja stir that up. So basically, it's just lime juice. It's, um, now we're going to see if you actually, all the trash that you uh-oh. talk about, I cook. Now we're going to see. <laughs> it's like when you watch somebody well, wrench on a car. Wait, oh, wait. no, you don't. You never use a wrench before ever. <laughs> Y'all see this fabulousness? I don't look like this when I'm in the kitchen. Okay, this is a task right this, now. This is a, mm-hmm. Because I don't want to get nothing on my outfit. So please excuse. I don't, I don't, nice th- I don't sense enough. I am because I'm enough, telling enough you. Enough torque in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you. I've seen the chefs. This week. I should hear a sound. <laughs> like I said. Got my Philly show. Like, like no. I said. Oh, you got to move in. Move in. Move in. You got to move. No, move in. Oh, am I off the camera? Okay, I'm, I'm scared. I don't want to mess up yeah, my So my basically, flannel. you're just mixing up the key lime. It smells Ooh. really good. Mixing all the ingredients. See, I don't want to. I don't want to get stuff. So on. what? If stuff fun, we're cooking. Good. We're having fun. There you go. It's like a project. There you, know? you go. Now you mix it. How do you know when it's like you know ready? Uh, I'm just looking to make sure that all the juice, uh, the eggs, leave? and the sweetened condenser are combined. Okay. I feel like I could. Oh, do this is probably one of my. Oh, oh. We're not at a place where I couldn't. The oven's about to explode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jay, so Jay's gonna put some tart shells on this pan here. Now, I want you guys to really pay attention to my skill as I move these tarts to the tray. All right, Boy! because not everyone. All right, so you take your tray. Right uh-huh. now, how many do you need me to actually move? Do about six. About six. Now I can count to six. Okay, so here we go. Who else can do that? All right, here we go. Twelve. One. <laughs> Forty-four. As a matter of fact, uno. <laughs> Oh, you're going Spanish, aren't you, too? Dos. Two. <laughs> Tres. <laughs> Cat. Cuatro. Cinc. Cinco, seis. Six. And I have all six on the tray. Excellent. Applaud me. Thank you. Oh, see. That was disrespectful. You're just like one of those mean cats who so, just like swats things for no you. reason. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. Pour some key lime mixture into each of those tarts. I though. could mess this up so bad. Should I should I hold it or should I put it back down? Uh, Am I done mixing? It. Yep, okay. you're done mixing. Do you want a ladle to do it or can you feel confident? Just no, I'm a ladle. That oh, you're, you're a ladle? Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. She's a ladle. Ladle. Put it right on there. All right, we'll ladle. Get, we'll, get ah. you, we'll get you a ladle. That even got the little, I'm a lady and I need a ladle. Mm-hmm. Little pouring thing on there. All right. So basically, then we're going to put them in the Try ladle shell. tenderness. That was good. That was good. Try ladle tenderness. You're annoying me. <laughs> I know, I know. Try. Is that good? Yeah, yeah. A little more. A ladle tenderness. A little more. There you go. Nice. Yep. Okay. And then now, these, as long as I don't dump it, baked in the oven at 350, mm-hmm. probably for about 10 to 15 minutes. Kind of depends on your oven. The thing with key lime is you don't okay. want to overdo it because you start to dry it out. I see your mm. fine motor skills. You want that like kind of soft custardy kind of feel. Mm-hmm. I would mess this up bad actually. Now, if you were doing a big pie, you might have to do it a second longer just to get your pie slices to hold up. My gotcha. dad loves key lime pie. He likes the pie, like with mm-hmm. the graham cracker. Mm-hmm. Okay. Would the yeah. pie take longer mm-hmm. because it's like bigger? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So the, because these are tarts, they're going to be done in 10 to 15 minutes. Oh, wow. A pie could take like 40 minutes, 45 minutes or okay. so to, to get done. And what's really happening is the acid in the lime is actually curdling the milk that's in there. I hate the word curdle. Now, you hate the word curdle? I really do. So nowadays, you know, because of pasture, pasteurization, they were cooking and everything, but back in the day, they could just let it do its thing. Oh, curdle, 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 curdle. curdle, curdle, curdle. curdle. Yep, mm-hmm. so we can go right in that oven behind you, Jay. Curdle was a hurdle. Put it in the oven. <laughs> there you go. All right, put curdle it in was the oven. a hurdle. <laughs> just put it in there? Yep. All and we're right. just baking at uh, 350. Top rack or, or middle? Uh, I like the middle. Like the middle. Yep, on this one. Now, if you're doing a Watch conventional oven, I would say on a conventional oven, I'd use the top. Get Wait, it away set from a timer? How are you doing that? Are we good? Are we good to go? Um, oh, yeah, we're good to go. Okay. okay. We're good to go. So I'm going to do a couple other tarts here. Okay. And just for the spring, uh, classic fruit tart, classic lemon curd tart. I know yes. you like the word curd. But I do like lemon curd. But you do like lemon I curd. I do like lemon Paula. curd. I didn't know what that was until my wife made it for my daughter. And she was like, Daddy, can you make me lemon curd? I was like, I don't even no. know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for the lemon curd, I mean, a lot of these fillings are related. Um, the difference would be for lemon curd, 
we're using eggs and the juice of a fruit. Mm -hmm. okay. So of course lemon juice. But you can do orange curd, raspberry curd. Is curdle still a hurdle? Curdle is still a hurdle. <laughs> and then uh, I'm also gonna do a quick fruit tart. Nice. Now I got some key lime tarts for y'all to try there. Okay. I'm here for all of the tarts for all the and tarts. all of the foods. So grab those right there. Let me know what you guys think of that. Mm, mm, mm. Tell me if you get a little that's tiny. Your, th that's your eyelash. What? That's your eyelash. No, it's not. Yeah, your eyelash is along no. than mine. So, okay, I have a question. Is there a way that we're supposed to eat this? Um, because all I want to do is pick it up like a cupcake, quite frankly. I, I'll be honest. If it's just me, I, I pick it up. So nothing goes on here? I can eat it now? If I want, you can eat it Can now. I eat now, Sam? If, if I want to be... Etiquette about it, you know. I'll take my Imagine me here. being. I'm just saying. Imagine me using proper etiquette. Uh -huh. I'm just saying. No, he didn't. He, 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 he said, oh well. Guess we're gonna have to redo the whole show now. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta catch up. Mm. Oh no, she's being all etiquette. Okay. Yes. She got, okay. She got this is dress, really good. She has her dress on. All so. right. Do you not see this lip? These, these uh, Fenty lips, oh. honey. I can and I forgot, like, I, 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 I know that you're Chef Dana, but, you know, the bakery. And oh, yeah. I forget that this is, like, your, your That's comfort zone. Mm -hmm. yep, oh, yep. my gosh, this is great. We have these at the bakery all the time. Key Lime's probably one of our um, most popular ones. That we yeah, do. like, the consistency of this one in terms of, like, I don't know what the word is, but it's, it's how the, the, you using the egg whites and the yolk, whatever, the, the way the texture is, this is, like, perfect. It's just creamy. It's just... Everyone doesn't do this as as it, as good as this. It takes a while to, to pick it up. Sometimes it's a little too limey, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? This is perfect. Yeah, the funny thing about key lime tarts is most of the time here up north, mm. we're not actually using the actual key lime. We're using more of like a Persian lime. The real key lime, um, this would be like a Persian lime, this one. A real key lime smaller. Really? Uh -huh. Yes, yeah. Oh, it's a specific kind of lime. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A key lime. A key lime. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. I learned something. Yep. They're smaller. The juice from them is more of a yellow color mm. than, a, than a greeny color. Mm -hmm. Does it ha what, what's the taste difference? Um, it's a little bit, I might say it's a little bit sweeter mm -hmm. than, than this one here. It's funny. Key limes kind of came about. Um, or should I say the key lime pie came about from a lemon cream pie, I think back in like 1931. Mm. With the history lesson. Yeah, the producer of um, one of the uh, sweetened condensed milks put out a lemon cream pie recipe and it kind of, people started adapting to it and they okay. changed it, they put the lime in there, some mm -hmm. orange. So I'm, I'm gonna shout out my brother Is with the word I'm about to use. So where are the key limes indigenous to? I want my indigenous limes. I would say Florida. <laughs> Florida. Florida. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm annoyed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. Key lime was known as one of the uh, best uh, regional desserts in the country. Mm. And Florida, Florida, make sure everybody knows about that. Too. Okay. <laughs> This okay. thing's so good. I just no, this is wonderful. So here and the we fact that I can just eat it with my hands is even better. A couple other tarts here. We got the strawberry tart. Um, under the strawberry tart, we did a pastry cream. Pastry cream. Oh, wait a minute, I thought she She's was. Walking, I thought it. <laughs> I was really confused actually. I, I got to go. She was going to be. I got. She was going to be the, got the, all the, the tarts. for the tart. She was out of there. And it's beautiful too. Yeah. I got to go. So. The, um, the tart in the middle has a pastry cream underneath. Again, another cousin of curds and so forth. All the fillings basically have uh, a liquid and an egg. Mm -hmm. So here it's milk and the egg, a little mm -hmm. bit of cornstarch. Here it's juice and the egg. So that's how they're all kind of related, even mm -hmm. the key lime. Sweetened condensed milk, juice, egg. Okay. So I think this is one of those things where it's like, I watched you, it uh -huh. looked easy. I feel like I could do it, but I know if I tried to do it, I would completely botch it. <laughs> so, but that seemed like a very doable thing. Like, oh, yeah. You know? yes. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. some of the fillings, the trick to them, you can cook them in a the pot, but use a double boiler, mm -hmm. which would mean a pot with the hot yeah. water and the bowl on top. Mm -hmm. You can walk away from it and do other things. Mm -hmm. okay. But if not, you'd have to sit there and nurse I put bacon bits on it. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Thank you, <laughs> Chef Dana, for this delicious treat. Um, we about to go um, out for a stroll. You ain't going nowhere. In, on the town. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go enjoy these now. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> As Naja sneaks off, mm -hmm. thank you guys for having me on today. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was great.
Welcome to Good Morning Wilmington with Naj and Jay. And today we are at the Soul Firm with Nataki Oliver. Miss Oliver, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for allowing us to come into this gallery. And I guess the first question would be, where are we and how long have we been here? And tell us just all about this place. You are in the creative district of Wilmington, downtown Wilmington. This is the 800 block of Tattnall Street. Um, the physical address is 800B North Tattnall Street. Right on the corner next to Libby's. What goes on here? We are an art gallery, more contemporary art gallery, that focuses on artists who are emerging or their first time ever showing their artwork. We touch on subjects from sexuality, to mental health issues, to incarceration. What was your general inspiration just for creating this place? I decided, I think I was, I think I was in my almost 40 and I said, I had a thought, I was at work. I still have a full-time job. And I was at work and I was saying, what am I gonna do when I retire? Just randomly. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna be an art dealer. I think I'm gonna travel the world. And I started saying it over and over again. And it's just, it started manifesting. And I started changing my social media to be geared towards art and, and the comparison of art and fashion. I kept doing that every single day. And the more I did it, the more I started being engulfed and people started, like Sakana said, people started listening and watching. So can you tell us about the current exhibit that we're sitting in front of? It's amazing. So Sakana was, um, he is an artist, a painter first. He's a painter first. And I was introduced to him through a cousin of mine who is housed at, uh, incarcerated at James T. Vaughan Correctional Facility in Smyrna. Me and my cousin are very close. He's doing a lot of time there. And um, he, our conversations are, you know, what am I doing? So it's always, <laughs> I'm at the gallery, this, you know. So last year he reached, he, we called, he called me and it was just a regular conversation. But this one, this time he was like, cuz, you gotta talk to this artist. When I first got locked up, they uh, had me classified as massive depressive, massive depressive disorder, anxiety, and a whole bunch of other different ailments. So they gave me a lot of medication. So I have a friend who's a, who's a doctor at the University of Pennsylvania Hospital. She told me that a lot of medication I was taking wasn't good for me. So I should weed myself off of it, just deal with reality. So I started, you know, stop taking the meds. And when I stopped taking the meds, like, the world became clear to me and I really didn't like what I was seeing. It was like every day was exactly like the day before. Every, it was like the groundhog day effect over and over and over again. So for me, for my mental state, it was important for me to like create something different every day, to do something different every day. So that's when I started sketching something, you know, started doing something different every day. And that's how it's helped me do this. some stuff from you know your upbringing and replace it with some other good stuff and then from there take those the stuff that you took had taken out of you know your psyche or your whatever your character characteristics and bring it into the art and that's I think that's where my art you know comes from like the stuff that I couldn't really deal with or address you know you know uh, growing up But I wanted to offer my platform to um, incarcerated artists some years ago. But I didn't want to be too excited because I wanted to find out what is he here for? What did he get locked up for? Why is that important to you? Well, I have morally. Yeah. Morally, it was, it could not be anything against children, women. It couldn't have been anything that um, I felt was malicious. So when um, I asked my cousin that, he said, no, it wasn't. Um, he told me that he was in there for second degree murder. I'm in a place 
Well, there's a lot of numbness, you know, even with our family becoming numb because of our situation. So I was trying to figure out, like, how could I feel again? So when I started sketching again, well, I, um, people started, like, coming to me, smiling, feeling good about stuff, and their families was were getting the uh, pieces in the mail, and they started feeling good. So I kind of felt like if somebody was able to send something home to their loved ones, it wouldn't stunt their loved ones' growth because their loved ones know they were doing okay in prison, so the burden was lessened a little bit. This, this exhibit is called Storm, and this is basically Sakana's journey on how he has weathered the storm being incarcerated. He feels like every time he's at an exhibit here on the screen, he's not, he's not in jail. He doesn't feel like he's there. So it really turned into like freedom from behind bars. I love, I love creating. I love um, the feeling that I get from people accepting me for me. Just create for yourself. You know, be cricket, just create for yourself. Just do for yourself. Be comfortable with who you are. Just bring yourself, yourself into fruition. Put yourself on a canvas. Put yourself in the music. Put yourself on the dance floor. Put yourself out there. If you work on yourself and build on yourself, everything else will come. When I grew up, you know, you know, I had to uh, change the way I act, change the way I think, you know, just so I could felt like felt like I could be accepted. So. This is me. What you see is what you get. And it feels really, really, really good. Nataki Oliver, thank you so much for having us at your gallery, The Sold Firm. You're doing some incredible work there. And as someone who was very ignorant uh, when it comes to the visual arts, the more I can expose myself to that environment, you know, the better off I'll be as an artist. You know the more cultured. Yeah, 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 it's important, you know. As I get older, I, I uh, appreciate the things that I used to reject, honestly. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't, I mean, you know, a little bit like I, I didn't really get into the arts at all until I was a lot later. So it's yeah. a steady process of me like, oh my gosh, how did I miss that when I was younger? How did I miss that? You know, so. Out there acting like a hoodlum. <laughs> Just being a meathead, honestly. Just sports and video games, you know? You play yeah. video games? Oh my gosh. We're not doing this. Yeah. Um. But I stopped. <laughs> and I have no interest in it now, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can't. It's just, I have, I have too much to do. You know, I can't imagine just, anyway, yeah, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> you know? He olded. Right yeah. There. That was an but old I thing. But I olded, I feel, no, go. So we're still <laughs> in uh, Panama Canal. We're still in a panorama, the Panda Express, <laughs> the Pandora's box. <laughs> um, you got opened about a year ago. Listen, there's so much to be said. So let's just run through them real quick. Mm -hmm. Bam. Condolences to all the families who have been affected or lost loved ones uh, due to COVID. Gotta keep saying it. <sighs> Our hearts here at DETV and with Good Morning Wilmington, they are with you. So yeah. sending you love and light. Um, bam. Texas <laughs> and Mississippi. You know what? I think I'm going to add this to our show regularly, the mom look. They need the mom look. And I know that they're I just want to smack. I j just, but you got to understand, just, though. A hundred percent capacity. There are a lot of people. There are a lot of people who are cheering them on. Let me tell you something. There are a lot of people who are cheering them on. It, it, I'm not. You know. <laughs> the analogy that I like the most is the idea of everyone's in the pool, and if one person, you know, diddles, empties their bladder, bladder in the pool in the corner, it eventually affects everyone. You know what I mean? Like it's 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 the same idea. Like we're all in the United States of America and Texas is there, you know, leaving some yellow in the water for us all to potentially float our way. And it's not cool. I this is why I don't go in the pool. Mm -hmm. I go uh 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 ill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's man. a great analogy. Texas and Mississippi <laughs> Yeah. Texas and Mississippi. <laughs> um 
I don't know what's going on there. I don't know what's, what y'all drinking. Freedom. Water. Freedom. No. They're free. Mm-mm. Well, They're be free. free. Stay there and be free. Stay there and be free. Please. Stay that's there the and thing. be free. That's the thing. Y'all be free. They ain't and, the only ones, enjoy, though. Enjoy okay? your freedom. And that's the problem. That ain't the, that they ain't the, the only ones. Uh, Atlanta still has been a mess. My oh, buddy's a mess. firefighter down there. And he's oh, like, these Oh, my people, gosh. Listen. I can't. That's, listen. I can't. I can't. But thank goodness, that if, if everything goes according to plan, in May, everyone will have access to the uh, the vaccine, and we can reach that herd immunity, hopefully. I don't appreciate y'all putting me in a herd immunity. I ain't no heifer. It's just like, a medical I don't, term. Uh-uh, I don't like it. It's a you medical like, term. Can we say group immunity? Okay, whatever National makes you happy. National immunity? Like, you call me a cow? You're in, no, we're calling you a herd of leopards. I'm not in a herd. You're in a, what do you call a gang of, I don't, like a... What do you call a, a group of, 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 of wild cats, of leopards? You never see them together because they're single animals. They don't really group together. A pack of leopards. So now you call me lonely? We're going to reach pack immunity. You calling me lonely? No, I'm saying we're going to reach pack immunity. Yes. Mm-hmm. So you already jumped to my next subject. With Sorry? Uncle Joe saying everybody will have vaccines by May. Yep. We'll see. Yeah. Um, and then we, we, we might see a stimulus. A stimmy. We might be stimulated again. I don't know. It just. I, 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 yeah. I don't want to talk about this no more. I know what. I, I get my second vaccination on the 18th. Um, I'm a little bit nervous about that one because they say that that's the one where you'll have the most. Um, Jay going to be on his couch under a blanket shivering. <laughs> and I'm going to go Facebook crying. Live the entire time and totally dramatize it, make it bigger than it is. But And actually. My brother just got his second shot. Oh, he did? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, uh, from my end, it's like at least I can protect myself and my close family. Yes. And everybody else has their freedom um, to make their own decisions regarding it. This is if if at any time you were gonna really think about your friendships, (laughs) this is the time. Okay. So check on your peoples in Texas and the Mississippi because uh, it's just a lot. I'm going not going on. there. I'm fully vaccinated. I tell you that much. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, two articles that popped up when I was doing some of this COVID research: um, healthcare workers facing a mental health crisis, mm. and doctors have been describing mental health pandemic for adolescents, and they're saying that self harming has jumped 99% yeah. for teenagers. No, and I don't think it's, I mean, it's it's certainly everyone because, and I, I hate to kind of go here because I'm excited for the spring and the future, but like, I literally have seen people that I haven't seen for some time mm-hmm. and you can just tell that they're struggling. Oh yeah. And you can see it in their face that things, yeah. and even honestly, you know, if you're really paying attention, like on the social medias, like you just see people's responses and snippiness. It's just a little bit. It's like a little yeah. bit. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, you're not. It's gotten a bit you, harsh. And you have to be um, empathetic of that. Yeah. You know what it's I mean? It's two extremes. You've got the extremely empathetic and compassionate people, and then you've got the angry people. Yeah. Who just can't. Who can't are not coping. And it's right. understandable, especially yeah. if you're a social person. I, I, yeah. I know I said it, I've said it before, but like I'm. I'm very fortunate because number one, I can be social, but I'm also happy to just be in my basement all day. And I like my immediate closest friends so I can stay in my little bubble and be cool. But some people really need to be out and about and that's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, and if you don't get that sort of stimulus, then (laughs) then it's a problem, you know? And it's it's really, it's it's unfortunate to see people and I hope that they have a means to recover. You know what I mean? Check on your people, you know, have compassion, um, but and one, check on your strong people. Yes, because, check on your strong people, because they could be struggling as well and not showing it. Mm-hmm. But something I saw online about how if you haven't been checked on by some friends, you need to reevaluate your friendships. No, 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 that's wrong. Hey, ah, but yeah, you, that's wrong because you don't know what people are going through, and that shouldn't define your friendship. Maybe they're struggling so badly that they can't find the strength to reach out. So don't. Don't beat anybody up. Be kind. Give people grace. This is our, our season of grace, you know, and, and to take We're, the time to have compassion and be patient and just love when you can. Literally, the sunshine is coming back and yeah. people are coming fresh yeah. out of the darkest, literally, part of the year. Yes. Uh, that, that sad disease is, is a real we thing. We went from COVID 
to it's an, seasonal blues. Uh, you know, and that, the seasonal blues are a thing either way. Every year. So, you know, this is the time to be, like you said, to, 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 I'm not going to repeat grace. what you Give grace. Give yourself grace and give others grace. Just be kind and right. just love. That's so, it. Can, can we talk about your, uh, your, your new certification and how that's going? You know, because that's part of what you're doing. You know? Yes. Let's do it. Oh, God. No, 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 don't be that way. You gotta, you gotta get there. Let's talk about I it. I know, I know. I'm giving myself grace. <laughs> that, that's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I launched my website. I'm not telling um, because okay. I'm not. I'm just not. But what are you doing? Like, what is what? What will be? What is your role? Talk so about for what people you're be. who are struggling with body image issues, who are struggling with self worth issues, who have anxiety, I'm not a therapist. I'm not proclaiming to be one. Um, but sometimes people just need someone to be an accountability partner, you know, or to coach th coach them through certain tasks or situations. I'm that person. I'm there to support. I'm your supportive partner um, through whatever we talk about in our sessions. I have created my own little programs and journals and things for you to, you know, work on worksheets to help you plan things out, brainstorm, map out your next six months, your next year. Um, I'm just an ear, and I help you come to the conclusion of what's best for you in your life. Yeah, and people need that, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like, but it's, it's based around who you are individually as you are. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not here to make you something you're not. I'm just here to show to help you bring out the beauty of you. Mm -hmm. And I love the fact that you kind of reached this point uh, where you – you know, educated yourself and got proper education on yep. that in this time. You know yep. what I mean? Because it's a, uh, it's 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 going to be really needed. Yes. You know, for a lot yes. of people. A lot of people spent a lot of alone time and sat and reevaluated their entire lives. Uh -huh. You know, and I think that's one of the positive parts of COVID. You yeah. Know, is having that time to reflect because usually we're in the hustle and bustle. We don't mm -hmm. take time for ourselves, but now we've had to. And you learn so much about yourself. Yeah. What's really been sort of um, different for me over the past, honestly, like two weeks or so, mm -hmm. is now I'm remembering the beginning of it. Yeah. You know, I go on my timeline and memories are coming up because yeah. I just I posted earlier on Facebook, like earlier this week, the last wedding that I did before things hit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I woke up today and I saw footage of me training one of my kids uh, in, the, in, the, in the Muay Thai over at, at mm -hmm. Hicks Anderson with the gym and mm -hmm. my coach, Coach Crew Paul. And, and this is all like just before things hit. Yeah. And even, I think yesterday, I, I so this, uh, an, an ethnomusicologist reached out to me over the summer. Ethnomusicologist, and, mm -hmm. okay. And she, is put, she put together, I think like 400 videos of artists who were, and, and the videos are basically about artists being affected by COVID and she yeah. got 400 or like maybe two of two to 400 individual people and she interviewed them and put them all together and she sent me back my interview with her and I was I watched it and it was just weird to see me in the summer last summer talking about it because mm. it was such a different time then yeah. and I think a lot of people are going to have I don't know if it's the, if PTSD is the term mm. but like you're going to relive those early moments of the lockdown, yeah. and that might be tough for some people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because oh, yeah. it was an. E I, I mean, I am as even keeled as you can get, and I am. Are you? I am, and I'm. You, most people would probably think of me as one of the strong people, and. Are you okay? I'm good. Okay. But I remember even me. My point is that even yes. me at that point was like. I had some sleepless nights. Like, what is coming up next? Yeah. I remember you know I told saying? you I didn't leave the house for, like, two months. Like, uh, literally did not leave. Right. Like, I remember exactly how I felt when things started to shut down. And we're like, where yeah. can I go? What can I do? The idea of, like... Cause the now toilet we know, paper was gone, baby. Right. It was gone. And we didn't know really about, about how much... About how the, the, the disease was transmitted. Yeah. So I would go to the gas station mm -hmm. and touch the, the nozzle and worried have I just infected myself right, with something that's gonna right. kill me. And more and worse, when I walk back in the house, did I just, you know, destroy my whole family. Yeah. You know? Like it uh, was such a time. And we know that's not how it functions, yeah. fortunately, but whew. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a rough, rough first couple yeah. months. So. I and I remember I stopped letting my family come to my house, period. Yes. And my mom 
um, my mom and my stepdad came to, to drop something off at the house, yes. and I only allowed them to come to the steps yeah. to see the babies at the yeah. door. Yeah. And my mom, she was like, Mm. Like and my mom it's is a, my mom was one of the strong That's ones. That's what I'm saying. Well, I tell you, she was about to lose it because she wanted to touch her babies, nothing, that's and the... I wanted to toss them to her. Uh, <laughs> right? No. But it, it was like I was so scared. Of course you were. It was terrifying. Yeah. And then with my son having lung disease, you know. Yes. But, my favorite memory, honestly. What? So Your there's favorite, always though. there's always a silver lining, and I will forever. What's up? What's up? My brother. I will forever remember. He'd be like, yo, we're coming through. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, yo, we're coming through. My brother rolled up with his full family. He pulled in front of my house, and he said, he pulled out, because that's when they started giving the, uh, you could take your, your alcoholic beverages to go. Mm -hmm. And he pulled out a shot of Jameson, and he handed it, like put it on the doorstep. I picked it up, and he stood across <laughs> and, it, and kept it moving. It was great. It was a great moment. That's cute. Yeah, it was great. That's all. Well... <laughs> We've reminisced on the, the hard times of COVID. Yeah. It's time to get into Le Mess. Celebrity news. Celebrity guests. I'm having fun with this because I can just, yeah. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me zip my mouth. Let me and tell let you some of the stories him. we got today. <laughs> Talk to him. T.I. <laughs> <laughs> Allegations. I know. These are allegations. Alleged. 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 Mm -hmm. T.I. and Tiny are facing multiple accusations of abuse and sexual assault from multiple women. Last time the count was 11. I hope that justice prevails and the truth comes about. That is a messy couple. It's I hope that the truth is uncovered and we know what the, the real deal. Because Listen. I don't want to see anyone, you know, right. get in trouble for something they didn't do. Right. But if they did something like that, Get in trouble. They need to be in trouble. Listen, it, they, I just need, I need them both to go sit down somewhere. Just, disappear just go sit down it's because a, there's a place where you just disappear. Y'all, y'all just be, <laughs> y'all be moving a lot. Just disappear. Now you know, moving drugs and guns. Be now quiet. you're moving women. I just just be quiet. You know. You want me to be quiet? No, no, no. Them. Oh, okay. Like disappear oh. from, disappear <laughs> from the cameras just for a while. Go sit down with your twelve kids, you know? okay, and all your money, <laughs> and just go. Yeah, twelve kids. No, oh, but they have right. a lot of children. Okay. Um, yeah. and grandchildren now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So go handle that. Mm -hmm. Lady Lady Gaga's dog walker was attacked and shot and the dogs were stolen but then returned. There was a five hundred dollar reward. Five hundred thousand dollar reward for the dogs. Let me tell you something. Prince, I love you, baby, but if you gone, you gone. <laughs> I ain't got no money for you, baby. <laughs> Hopefully they get you the, the dog food you like and you're a bed and they clip your nails and brush your teeth because once they smell my dog's breath, they might bring him back anyway. But I'll ain't say, no way. I'll, and then you telling me I got shot for walking your dog? So oh, no. <laughs> there's no, like I'll save my full commentary for the Laugh House, <laughs> but I'll say this. When you are the dog walker for Lady Gaga, the Why? last thing you think that's going to happen is you're going to get popped. You are, like, you are taking these extremely, <laughs> you know, precious, expensive, and they're like... Okay, the like, dog's collar costs more than your house. Literally, I'm sure. And it's like, what just I happened? just got shot. I'm going to tell you. I'll stop there. I, Mama, was, I was walking the dog. And they shot what me. What a story. They shot me. It's like, that they is shot Hollywood me, as it comes. <laughs> <laughs> glad that there. person is okay. Are we glad you are. Right. Um, Sincerely. But can you imagine? Lady Gaga, what, what kind of heat your dog's packing? You like, got <laughs> the like, most. And they only, what, Frenchies? You got the dogs? most foofy, foofy job you could possibly get. Listen. Like this, If there's anything that's supposed to be safe, it's walking Lady walking Gaga. the dog. You know, and that's the whole conversation you about America. Up, poof, Listen. And you get shot? Like, that's. It's Listen. time to reevaluate some things. <laughs> <laughs> this is not good. Mike. My condolences to that person. I'm sorry you got shot. <laughs> like there are some dangerous jobs. And you and some of the dangerous jobs the people don't get hurt doing the dangerous thing. You know Listen. what I'm saying? Your dad is a retired policeman. Yes. And he, you know, he's okay. He's a Yes. Uh, I just 
I don't know. I don't. I don't know what the world has come to. COVID has done some things America, to people. America, only in America Woo. does the dog walker go ahead. But she posted up five hundred thousand dollars for the safe return of her dog Prince. I, I ain't got it. <laughs> I ain't got it. You're in better hands now. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see how they feel after like you start barking at night. <laughs> and I'm like, you could see. Okay, like. What you can? There's so many dogs that you can steal. Like I, I can know. just go over the fence and like. Literally. And, why would you go through so much to like? And in LA, of all places, like they literally have <laughs> adopt, sidewalk like, adoption. The coyotes are like feeding off of people. <laughs> but go ahead, go ahead before I get myself oh, in trouble. <laughs> so uh, Bobby Schmurder. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you Shmurda something. Shmurda that was my has jam. been released. That was my jam. I'm sorry. First of all, too we old don't for say to be jam. My, I said, I'm old. <laughs> that was the bomb diggity. That that was the bomb diggity. It was the bomb. He's Raise the itch. roof. Raise the roof for Bobby Shmurda. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> make me want to do the running man out this piece. <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> Ray- <laughs> he was uh, released and picked up by Quavo. Oh, that's so sent, funny. Uh, he was sent that doesn't a private even sound jet. real. Bobby Schmurda was picked up by he Quavo. He FaceTimed Me- Meek Mill and said that he ain't going back to jail, and if he go back to jail... Something about um, he, he's going to be light-skinned and Jamaican, so that tells you he ain't trying to go back to jail. <laughs> That's really funny. Um, he had 40 pounds of oxtail waiting for him. Wow. Yes. Wow. And if you know pounds. anything about oxtail, Sam knows. Sam knows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's expensive, but it's, it's worth it. Um, 40 pounds, though. 40 pounds of oxtail. What? So, young man, make music. Stay positive. Yeah. Enjoy your chance. Make another jam. Enjoy your second chance <laughs> and, and make the best of it, you know? Yes. I'm pro- I don't know if he has children, but at some point he might have yeah. children. Yeah. And, you know, now's your time to get things together and, and appreciate the fame that you still have and use it for good. Yes. Yeah. And that was Celebrity Gossip with Najan. Raise Nicole. the roof. <laughs> <laughs> that was the bomb he diggity. Just, he just knows. Kaboom. <laughs> Thank you for watching that. Yeah. Um, we love you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you on Wednesday.